Oh, getting a little tap. Never know if it's going to be a two footer or if it's going to be an eight footer. 20 pound fish, 400 pound fish. You never know. Oh, there's a good bite. Got him. All right. Drop off a spot lock here. This is going to be a bigger fish, I can tell. All wrapped up in it. This is a white sturgeon. They really haven't changed much in the last 300 million years. There's fossil records. They look just like this. Let's fish back in the water. But unlike sturgeon, modern fishing kayaks have rapidly evolved to incorporate technologies such as sonar. And like in this kayak, I have an iPilot Minn Kota trolling motor. Choosing how you power these electronics is a very important decision. So today I thought I would discuss choosing the right battery to power your fishing electronics and to power your electric powered kayak. Now one of the first things you have to decide whether or not you're shopping for a battery for your fish finder or to power your lights and other electronics on your boat or if you're looking for something to actually power your iPilot or Minn Kota motor, you need to decide between sealed lead acid batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are the two dominant batteries that uh, anglers are using to power their kayaks. Now, right here in front of me, I have two 12 amp hour batteries. This is a sealed lead acid battery, weighs about nine pounds. This is a lithium battery it weighs about three pounds i can toss it it's very lightweight and that's one of the big advantages lithium is just how light it is and you know fishing kayaks are already getting heavier and heavier and having to transport uh, a heavy battery can make a big difference especially like when you're powering an autopilot like mine a seal lead acid 100 amp hour battery is going to average around 60 pounds whereas the lithium is only going to weigh right around 30. now the major disadvantage of lithium is that they're Quite a bit more expensive anywhere from three to five times more expensive than a sealed lead acid battery so the initial investment up front is much higher but you gain many advantages uh, with lithium batteries first is cost per cycle ends up being about half of what it would be if you ran sealed lead acid additionally out of each individual charge a lithium battery is going to give you better life that is on a single charge so so most kayak systems are running on 12 volt systems and on a sealed lead acid battery down to about 30 percent of its charge it stops outputting enough volts to keep your electronics going and if you're running a commercial traffic scared me and if you're running a trolling motor uh you'll see the performance of that trolling motor decline um, as the voltage declines. Whereas on a lithium battery, you'll get 12 volt output all the way down to about 10% of its capacity. So you're gonna get more time on the water on a single charge. Lots of traffic out today. There's a good bite. Come on. Tap, tap. There we go, got him. All right. Ooh, feels like a good one. Now you might be thinking that a lithium battery is maybe your best option, but that might not be true. If you can't afford the price of a lithium battery, then obviously you'll have to make do with the sealed lead acid. But most anglers, if you're not fishing, you know, 100 times a, a year, you're not gonna ever come close to using up the number of cycles in your lithium battery. So. So if you're not a super serious angler, then and weight isn't really an issue for you, and the increased single charge performance isn't a deal breaker for you, then sealed lead acid might actually make uh, the most cost effective sense to you. Now let's talk about how much battery do you actually need to power your fishing electronics or your your motor. So we'll start with the sonar, um, since that is probably the most common electronics accessory that most 
kayak anglers are going to have on their kayak and they need to power. And the major influence there is the size of your screen. So um, I've run both Helix 5s and this is a Helix 7 here. And typically, if you have a size 5 inch screen or less, you're going to be drawing on average about a half of an amp per hour or less. So that helps guide your battery buying decisions. If you have a seven inch screen or greater, you're gonna be consuming closer to one amp per hour. I've checked on my Helix 7, it's about 0.8 amps per hour. That means with a 12 amp hour battery, I'm going to get approximately 10 to 12 hours on the water, depending on if I have a sealed lead acid battery or if I have a lithium battery. Uh, so it's not quite uh, two full days on the water. Whew, this guy is going crazy. So typically for me, you know, I'm gonna be doing about eight hours on the water. Some days I'll do longer and I'm gonna need to recharge almost daily if I'm running my Helix 7 on a 12 amp hour battery. Whereas if I'm on my Helix 5, then I will be able to go out and do two full days of fishing on it pretty easy and I'll have to worry about recharging. So think about that in terms of your battery usage. If you're somebody who goes on long road trips and doesn't want to have to recharge their battery or will be unable to recharge their battery, then if you have a smaller screen size, then you might be able to get away with a 12 to amp, 18 amp hour battery and get two to three days on the water. Uh, whereas if you've got a bigger screen size then you might be looking at either buying multiple batteries or um, even larger batteries than 12 amp hour you might be getting the 18 or 24. Additionally if you're gonna run up this is a big fish this thing is like just feels like I'm just hung up on the bottom but I'm not. Okay let's talk about batteries for powering your trolling motors. So this is an autopilot so it's powered by the iPilot. There's also the Minn Kota 106, uh, which has a slightly different motor. For most anglers that are powering their Minn Kota and iPilot kayaks, they're using 100 amp hour batteries. So that's what's recommended by Old Town is at least 100 amp hour. Obviously, if you're just a pond hopper and you don't have a lot of energy demands on your trolling motor, then maybe 50 amp hour might make sense. Um, for you, but I think the vast majority of us are running 100 amp hour batteries or greater. Now, Old Town's battery box is sized for a Group 27 battery, and you can typically find sealed lead acid batteries um, in Group 27 100 amp hour deep cycle marine batteries for right around $200. And you'll find there's a bigger range in the lithium batteries, anywhere from you know, 500 up to $1,100. There's a lot of variability. It seems like there's many more companies coming into the market um, producing um, more and more affordable lithium batteries. This is a very, very large fish. I am not moving this fish. Now, that being said, be sure and check the dimensions on your lithium batteries. I've noticed there's a lot less consistency in the lithium battery world on the size of the 100 amp hour batteries. And a lot of the group 27 lithium batteries will fit easily into the um, box provided by Old Town, the battery box. But even some group 31 lithiums will fit uh, quite well in that box. And that's actually what I have in mind today. You will also see uh, quite a bit of variability in amperages. You'll see some lithium batteries that have this group 27 size or group 31 size that have up to 150 amp hours you might be wondering how are they squeezing so much more power into the same size battery and a lot of that has to do with the design of the cells inside the battery so the majority of lithium batteries especially those in the 100 amp hour range have cylindrical cells so they look just kind of like the batteries you buy at the store like your your double A's and things like that. And they're stacked inside those boxes. But some of the higher amp hour lithium batteries uh, use prismatic cells. So these are these like, almost like 
wafers or packages or pouches and they can pack a lot more because they're square in shape inside these square batteries the this is a nice fish it's a little over four feet <sighs> That's a very nice sturgeon. There you go. It's oversized, so I can't take it out of the water, but still, beautiful fish. So the difficulty with those prismatic cells is that because they're more tightly compressed in there, um, it can trap more heat. There's more components that have to be wired together. So there's just more opportunity for failure. That being said, there's a lot of great battery brands out there using prismatics uh, that have very good customer service. But you do have to be careful and watch those things and monitor, make sure they're not overheating uh, because they're more prone to overheating. And if there's a failure in any individual one of those many hundreds of flat cells that are packed inside there, then it will really degrade the function of the battery itself Whereas with cylindrical cells, uh, they're less prone to that failure, they're less prone to overheating. The battery management system has an easier time managing heat in the battery. And even if a single cell fails, the performance of the battery won't be greatly depleted, whereas it might be more significantly impacted in the prismatic cell batteries. Now when wiring up your kayaks for electronics um, on Minn Kota and autopilot kayaks, you do not want to utilize the battery for your trolling motor as the same battery for your fish finder because it will create interference um, that will cause your fish finder to get a, a bunch of noise on it and it will make it much more difficult to use. So make sure you use separate power sources for your fish finders and for your trolling motors. Now determining how much power you need for your autopilot or Minn Kota kayak it's a much more difficult question to answer. This will all vary depending on your fishing style, where you fish, uh, what type of conditions you plan to fish in, how long you plan to be out on the water. Now, if you're running sealed lead acid, you have the advantage of having a battery display that shows relative amount of charge left on the battery by pushing the test button on your Minn Kota. But those are not calibrated for lithium battery. Lithium batteries tend to have a higher voltage output um, to later in their charge like I was talking about in the beginning and because of that uh, that battery readout isn't uh, accurate. So it's more difficult to ascertain how healthy your battery is um, when you're out on the water and that is why there are aftermarket lithium battery meters that you can attach to your uh, battery box um, or somewhere on your kayak uh, that will give you a readout of how healthy your lithium battery is. But for example, on mine, I actually have a little Bluetooth built into the battery itself. And I can just hit that switch and turn on the Bluetooth. And then I have an app on my phone that I can then bring up and check the health of my battery. And it gives me the actual readout of remaining amp hours. And I can also see what my current amp hour draw is. So it gives me an idea of, you know, how much battery do I have left? How much draw am I removing off of the battery? Here I am, I'm spot locking in relatively light winds and light current, less than one mile per hour. And I'm drawing about one amp hour. Okay, I can see that on my app. And conceivably, I could sit here and do this for upwards of 100 hours. Obviously, I'm going to get some depletion beforehand in uh, voltage. But it also gives me my real-time voltage, 13.3 volts, 91.3 amps remaining. So having that Bluetooth functionality has really helped me out because now I can see real-time what my remaining amp hours are, what the current draw is off of the battery. I can also see my voltage. So I can adjust my behavior accordingly. Let's say if I'm in a rush somewhere and I crank the motor up to level setting 10, it's really gonna start to draw a lot more current off the battery. So I can moderate my behavior based on what uh, the app is showing me 
is happening to my battery. So, you know, I may not, if I'm a long way from the boat ramp, uh, I may not make it back at a level setting of 10 if I've drawn the battery down low enough. But if I say set it at a level of seven or five on the speed setting, uh, it considerably reduces the draw off of the battery and increases my range and I might be able to get back to the boat ramp that way without having to use a paddle. So having this Bluetooth capability has really made a big difference for me and I know several battery companies are doing it. Is just to get a relative idea how much draw there is off of the battery at different speeds, I'm going to set different speeds here and we're going to look at the draw on this app. So I'm at setting one and there's one amp being drawn push that up to five and now there's nine amps being drawn so quite a big jump there let's go up to seven and a half now we're at almost 20 amps per hour being drawn off so for the 100 amp hour battery you've got about five hours at a seven and a half speed setting. Let's push it up to the maximum at 10 and we're at 35 amps. So it will, if you have it at maximum speed 10, it's going to drain the battery in about three hours. How you use your motor will dictate a lot about what your battery longevity is going to be. I mean, most of the time when I'm trolling, I'm down closer to speeds of 1.5 to 2 miles per hour, which is easily achieved at a speed setting of 3, and I'm only drawing 3 amps, so I can do that conceivably for 25-30 hours. So it's just going to vary depending on your battery usage and the fisheries that you're in. Got him. Feels like a baby. Maybe not. There he goes. Change my mind. Not a baby. Well, I hope that answers some of your questions about choosing the right battery for your fishing kayak and fishing electronics. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Otherwise, we hope you stay powered up out there and catching fish. See you next time.